Rub up your engines! Here we have a conundrum we're gonna try to figure out. It's a 2003 Z car, bought relatively cheaply, and it didn't run right. Seemed like maybe the engine had a problem. A good running engine from a car that it was seen running before it was bought, then after it was seen to run good, it was put into this thing, and then it ran good, which was great. But there's one problem. It only ran good for about five minutes. Now the noise is just because it's out of power steering fluid. It's not running right. You've got to figure out why. Now you might think, oh wow, the whole engine in there, maybe that's not the problem. What a waste of money. Well, this is a soldier here, and they're wise with their money. This particular engine, he only had to pay a hundred bucks for it in a transmission. It was on an abandoned vehicle on post, which they sell cheaply. And since he heard it run good, he knows it's not the engine. And he's got a spare transmission now, too. <laughs> now, as you can see with this data, the mass airflow sensor is going at 4.5. It should be more like 3.5. But don't always be deceived by data, because data may be giving you the actual data the computer sees, but data can be skewed by various things. And in this case, one of the most notorious things that gives you bad data from a sensor is an air leak somewhere. Now, here's the meter. As you can see, well one, this is kind of loose. This needs tightening up, but we're going to take it off first. The air is metered here. Then it has to be a sealed system. And what do we have here? A giant hole! Hmm! <laughs> now the sensor itself is measuring the airflow. So it can only measure the air going this way. Well, the hole being here, it doesn't measure any of that air. So it's going to give totally wrong data to the computer. The computer is going to be so confused, and that's why it has such a bad idle. But if you noticed, I rubbed it up. When I rubbed it up, it ran pretty good. Why did it run pretty good? Because the faster you go, the less effect an air leak is going to have. Anytime you get a car that runs really bad at low speeds, but better at high speeds, you probably got a massive air leak somewhere because it's confused at low speeds. That leak is affecting maybe 30% of the information, but when you're going fast, maybe that'll go down to 5%, and that's good enough the car doesn't care, it'll run down the road. Now, if you had an emergency, you could tape this up and plug it up, but this being a soldier's car where he has many spare parts from the vehicle that he bought the hundred dollar engine and transmission from we'll just put that air duct on well it was a good idea he has this but unfortunately it's the wrong size it won't fit onto the engine and you can see the adapter it came with doesn't exactly fit correctly so we're just gonna tape this up for the time being we're gonna have to buy another one anyway or if you don't want to buy anything heck you can get some JB weld get a bolt and just stick it in there with a JB weld, and when it hardens, it won't leak anymore. How I propose a soldier's car it has a bandage on it from a wound. Now make sure this is on super tight, because you don't want any air leaks. And while you're at it, check everything. Sometimes these bellows rip, but they're not rip. But they will rip, and they'll be real stickers, because you won't see it. But then when the engine cocks to one side when you rev it up, it opens the ripped hole, and then it doesn't work right. I've had that happen many times. Well, let's start it up and see what it does now. Well, it's no longer conking out like it was. Let's take it for a ride. Here we go for a short spin. Sounds good so far. Curse the speed bumps. They even have them in military encampments. Well, as the saying goes, you got good news, you got bad news. The good news is, the engine's now in excellent shape. Idle's quite fine. It won't accelerate well because the transmission's got a problem. You can see here, it's got some absurd data. When the car was not moving, it said the vehicle speed SE was 29 kilometers an hour, even though the vehicle speed was zero. Now I could tell by driving it had a transmission problem because one, there was too much slippage, and especially in reverse, it would barely move at all. He got lucky in one respect that now he has two engines, because the original one obviously didn't have a problem, and he also got a new engine here and a transmission for 100 bucks. It was from a wrecked vehicle. There was nothing wrong with the engine and transmission, but the frame was all bent up. So he's going to put the new transmission that he has in, and everything should be hunky-dory. This is a very good example of if you want to get 
a cute sports car and fix it up. This thing was less than two grand. It's always a good idea to find a parts car somewhere. <laughs> Especially on these because they've got a lot of interchangeable parts. There's zillions of them around and a lot of times you can get a fantastic deal because somebody has an engine that's all built up and since it's so built up it goes really fast and the people driving them wrap them around a tree and the engine isn't harmed but the bond the car is completely total. So as in his case for a hundred bucks he got everything he needed and all he has to do is put the transmission in from there. Because if you can get a car that looks like this for less than two grand and spend a hundred dollars for an engine and transmission that's not a bad deal i don't think there aren't a bunch of them out there it's a perfect example of one if you don't mind a little bit of work he's doing all the stuff himself you can find stuff swap it out you just need to know a little bit like i'm showing you here of what to look at what to find out's wrong and then you can have a lot of fun with a car like this or if you're a car flipper you can make some good money because there's lots of them out there this man's brave enough He's even a dude with a BMW that he wedged the turbocharger in down there. The BMW, he only has $2,000 of it. That's the advantage of BMWs on one hand. Yes, they're expensive to buy new and fix, but when they break, a lot of people give up on them. There are many of them around with lots of good parts on them that you can get dirt cheap if you don't mind messing around with it yourself. And here's some bonus questions and answers. New to you says, which Toyota Corolla Camry should I stay away from? Well, one, you would stay away from the few years, especially around 2007, 2009, of the 2.5 liter four cylinder engines because they made the piston rings wrong and most of them burn oil. Now, Toyota replaced the rings in a bunch of them. If you're buying a used one, if a guy has a certificate from Toyota that says they've replaced the pistons and piston rings, then go ahead and buy it used. Now the Corollas themselves are pretty bulletproof but for a very short period of time I guess it was a couple years ago they came back out with the Toyota Corolla hatchback. It was basically the Toyota Matrix that they'd stopped making but they decided to call it the Toyota Corolla hatchback. Originally they were called Toyota Corolla Matrix then they just called the Matrix. Well at any rate the first time it came out it had a CVT transmission they had to recall them all. So don't buy that first year model but other than that the Corollas are pretty good cars. My son's got one with the CVT transmission but it's got that first actual gear in it that's the takeoff gear so it actually accelerates really well. He drives like a maniac and he loves it but gets great as much. So that's the only Corolla you'd really have to worry about. Ralph says, Scott, I'm looking at a 2017 Toyota Sienna for my daughter and her growing family. They're not as crazy in price as the Highlanders and minivans are not cool. Any thoughts or advice? Go ahead. If you can find a Sienna that's not that crazy. Yeah, because the Highlanders are SUVs. Everybody is nuts about an SUV. Truth be known, a van actually is better for a family. My son's got a really nice Sienna van. The whole family fits in it. Everybody can go on vacation. People can even sleep in the far back if they need be. And lots of space. They don't break down. Same engine as the Highlander. You know, it's just a different body style. The problem is SUVs are so popular, the SUVs always go for them. I tell people, look, if you can get a minivan or a sedan in your lifestyle, you're going to pay a lot less than an SUV because the SUVs are just popular. We live in a capitalist society. Popularity breeds higher prices. Get the CN if you can find a good one because, yeah, you can get them a lot cheaper than you're going to get an SUV. Well, it says, what do you think of Suzuki Hayabusa's? Are they reliable? <laughs> They're insanely reliable, but reliably they can finish you off because they are just too fast. Now, they're speed limited when they weren't. The original Hayabusa's would do over 200 miles an hour. They were the first production motorcycle you could buy with no modifications that went over 200 miles an hour. They are just screamers, super fast motorcycles. They're relatively heavy motorcycles and going 200 miles an hour, you better know what you're doing. A lot of young people killed themselves on those things when they first came out. They got the nickname Widowmaker among motorcycle guys because they knock out so many people. But they're extremely reliable, you know. If you drive 200 miles an hour, odds are they won't last that long because you'll probably wreck the things. But the engineering behind them is insane. They are extremely strong motorcycles. Just, you got to think, do I really need something that can go that fast? That's awful fast. It was something when I was a kid to get a motorcycle and went 100 miles an hour. And that's twice that. 
<laughs> Two times insanity. Journeyman Tommy Five says, Scotty, you're the man. What's the best time to buy a brand new GMC Acadia? The best time is to buy a used one that some fool paid 50, 60, 70 grand for one, and then you buy it for 20 when it's got 40,000 miles on it. That's the best way to do it because they fall apart as they age, and buying a brand new one is kind of foolish. Now, if you do want to buy a brand new one right now, between Christmas and right after New Year's is the best time to buy cars because nobody's buying cars. Salesmen get paid by straight commission. Most of them don't even get a salary. So they got a deep discount to sell anything in the holidays because nobody's buying cars. So if you do, buy it now. But if you're smart, buy one that's got 40 or 50, 60,000 miles, a lot cheaper than buying a new one that's going to, purse is going to drop like a stone. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.